What is up, y'all? Well, my name is No Replace. Welcome back once again to the 100 Day Drink Challenge. Today, we have what is the bane of most people's existence, which are hands. I don't really know about my issue with hands. I haven't really thought about it too much, but I feel like I'm alright with hands. I don't know, but we'll, I guess we'll see. Uh, I'm gonna try attempt to break down how to draw the hand today for myself and all of you at home. Thanks to vibe number 9467 for the idea to draw just body parts because we've been focusing so much on faces and stuff uh and just the overall gesture of the body that we haven't had much chance to really break down the body into different pieces and draw all of that okay so i've already prepared a reference image i've got a bunch of references we're going to be breaking down today but i figure i'll break down a few of you guys as always and then we will kind of speed through the rest. And then I'll explain what's going on in each one after. Okay, so we have this hand right here. How would you break it down? I'm going to draw over the top of this to begin with. So I don't know if I can use red. No one has really complained about me using red, so I'll use that. But the first thing you want to spot is where the knuckle line is like this. Kind of where the knuckles go from, and where the tendons come from as well. You can see the tendons in some photos, like most photos do have them. Because um, again, <laughs> you can just see the tendons usually coming from your middle finger, and then the fingers around it. Not so much the pinky or the thumb. So you start by drawing that. Right? And the wrist kind of ends there, because this is where the forearm starts. Okay, and for what happens from this basic shape is, you know that the middle finger is basically here. It starts from here. But because there's a, a, a like a lump, I want to say a lump of fat, and like flab and flesh and all that, you're actually not going to start from this point, you're going to start from a bit out. So what I like to do is measure out the lengths of each joint in the finger, kind of like this. If you just mark out roughly where everything is, like this, you'll get a good idea of like how the finger's being foreshortened. So as you can see here, we have the joint. So now you can just draw in circles for the actual joints. So there's a joint there. There's a joint there. For the index finger. Here for the ring finger. Is what I'll call that today. And then one down here for the pinky. But it's kind of like hidden behind. Okay, so. Imagine fingers. This is an analogy I'm going to use, but imagine the fingers is like a staircase. Because you know how a staircase overlaps? Like you draw a step, then you draw a step, then you draw a step. Imagine it like that, but four hands, right? And then what I also like to do is draw a triangle to represent the joint of the thumb. So we've got the joints of the knuckles here. Like that. And then the thumb is from this joint you draw a triangle that goes back to the wrist like this and then from here you could if you want if it will help you break it down you can also draw a circle for the thumb joint there and then another line for that okay so we have this now how do we use this to draw the the hand it's like all we've got are just a bunch of lines and a whole lot of nothing. And remember, each time you've reached this line, you see it, you can see it here. Um, each time you hit the line, you kind of get a lump because of that joint. So everywhere you put a line, there's going to be a joint. Now, if you if it helps you draw a circle on that line to represent that joint kind of like this and then in between it dips in and then back out towards the joint and I like this 
and then same thing in out and in this case it just goes to the pretty much to the thumb like that and then the finger is kind of so you remember how we did gesture and we did line of action that each finger has its own line of action in this case because if you look at it this finger's flowing kind of like this this finger's flowing like this like this and then like this it's all kind of flowing in this direction and to not make your fingers stiff you kind of want to show that so again if you don't know the length of each finger you can also mark the, the end of the fingertips but in this case i'm not gonna do that gonna do it like this and then remember the nail extends the length of the finger here I'm gonna zoom in a bit so I can see kind of round it we'll draw the nail in first like this there's one finger it looks weird, but that's just how it looks in the photo. That's my excuse. And then... You can kinda see the way this one's going. Again, I'll just kinda start from the nail and work my way... Towards the joint. The joints, like this. And then, whoop. Really show that foreshortening in each joint. Wearing a ring. Which is gonna... I'm not sure if you can notice that. But if someone's wearing like a ring or something, it usually means the flesh of the hand will go inwards like this because it's getting pinched, right? So I'll even draw the ring in to show where that hand is getting kind of pressured. It's all kind of going inwards so. so there's that finger and then this finger is actually going behind this one so one mistake i can see with our hands is this plane is not really the same though it kind of looks the same i don't know i guess we'll leave it to the end and see if i need to make corrections because if you don't make corrections, you're just not going to improve. And you're not going to soak in the information. Uh, in between the fingers, like I said earlier, there's like a little flab of fat. Almost like a webbing. Okay. Make sure your fingers are actually like proportionally wide as well. If it helps you, if it helps you draw cylinders towards each joint like this and then you can see the foreshortening and everything happening in each finger like this right just like we did with the body and the gesture, you can do with the hand to understand the hand a little bit more. But in my case, we're kind of chilling, we're vibing. So again, there's a ball for the joint right there. 
which leads to this joint right here. And it kind of goes like that. You don't, you don't see what's going on behind here because it's literally on that line. So we keep it. And then the pinky again, joint right here, joint right here. And then because there's a joint right here, this red one that we did, like right here, again, it also just goes out and in back into the hand. The wrist also has like some sort of joint right there as well to make it go out. Okay, now let's do the thumb. So thumb is fat, ugly, and nasty. The middle line of the joint will be here. Yeah, kind of like that. And then goes out and in. And then out and in. And then there's the forearm. Like that. It's just that this finger right here is in front of the thumb. So it'll be like... It'll be taking over the space where the thumb is hiding. And I like this. And if we hide the red, you can see we've got the hands. If you want, you can also draw like the line where the tendons come from, etc. But this is more or less how I draw my hands. So now if I erase all the little joints we did. I feel like I messed up the thumb a little bit. We made this curve a bit too big. <laughs> but yeah, that, there we go. Okay, let's try another example and then I'll kind of speed through the rest. So there's our first kind of example, the hand. How I would break that down. Let's try a harder one. Let's try one where the fingers are in front instead of the palm. I feel like this one is usually what trips up a lot of people. Like ones that are like these. Like this. But again, the same concept applies. It's pretty simple. If you know... If you've done perspective and you know you've done like 3D, you can figure this out pretty easily. So again, knuckles. And I like this. Go down. Again, go down. And it's angled like towards this point here. And again, the triangle for the thumb be like this. Because the joint is like that. It's right there. It's hidden behind the thumb. You can see the outline kind of like going like that. So just connect the triangle with where the outline will be behind. And then in this case, the forearm is connecting like this. Okay, let's try break this down as well. So in this case, I'm going to use cylinders because cylinders are like playing the biggest role here in building the hand. And I like that. See, you can see the cylinders coming out from the joints. Okay, so just like before, let's try do the joints, but just looking at the image. We know that the middle finger joint is right there. 
and therefore the index joint is right there in the foreground. The pinky joint is hiding. There we go. All right, and then we draw cylinders. So one cylinder there. Another cylinder here. Make sure your fingers are following some kind of line of action like they do in gesture. And then the ending of the finger like this with the nail. Uh, coming out like this treat the end of each cylinder like a joint as well so there'd be a joint here there'd be a joint here and finally the knuckle joint that comes out and then back in like this Okay, and then from here we go up into the middle finger knuckle and we do the same thing so this knuckles uh, I mean the joint for the middle finger here is actually lower compared to the index finger so we're gonna ma map that out okay that's that there's a big rounded bit here because there's a lot of tension happening. Okay, then we do... So this one actually goes kind of like that. The next joint starts from where the fingernail goes. I'm gonna do that. we can see that this one goes kind of behind that index finger okay this one actually goes in out and I like this that's the middle finger now the ring finger is a bit further apart I'm going to draw this for the joint. And then there's a lot more foreshortening happening here. Yeah. There's... This one's way higher. The cylinder for the... For this finger. Might even be higher. And off to the side like this. Yeah, it's like that. And then it goes down. Again, cylinder. This time it's a kind of above that one from the middle finger, so I'll put it there. And then you can see the nail kinda. Do the nail first. From the joint goes in. Now down and I like this and then the pinky again with the pinky cylinders going back there and then it's bending and then that's the bottom of the pinky right there with the nail. Like that. And then you don't see the palm until like here. If 
I were to draw like the palm shape here, then we start the farm. Again, we have to draw where the palms kind of coming from. Be right there. joint for the farm at least anyway and then it goes up and I like this and then the farm Could be there like that it's mainly just, you need to get the hang of foreshortening it. That's how I would draw this hand, if I had to draw this hand. With the forearm right there. I don't know if I did it right. Something tells me it's a bit stiff looking. The nail here. Should be positioned a bit more this way. This nail is just completely wrong. You yeah, know, that's this hand basically drawn. So if I go rid of the guidelines now, all the knuckle joints, all the little things. You should be able to see a hand in this. See, like, that looks pretty identical to me. It doesn't look too far off. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna speed it up and just keep drawing more hands. And then we'll see kind of where we go from there. Um, wish me luck. Wish me luck. Hopefully you guys... I've learned something new, but okay, let's just speed through some more hands.
Okay, and that's me done. I don't know if you guys want to see a part two of this, but I'm very happy with uh, how our hands turned out. So this is the Jackie Chan example with their fingers really just overlaying on top of each other. Another good way of drawing hands, as I realized, is you can just use circles. Uh, as long as you know what a cylinder looks like in perspective, you can just use circles to layer, layer on the depth. So you'd start with the foreground and work your way into the background. And kind of like this, you build depth. Uh, using mainly more rounded forms. Like that could work as well. For me particularly, it was just laying out where the knuckle line is. Where that kind of connects to the bottom of the palm. And then again, the triangle for the thumb is always there as well. So in this case, for this hand, it'd be like, it's a lot more curved, the palm. So it'd be something like this, and then the triangle would be like right there. It's just being able to see that shape. Um, I need to practice that. And then we can draw hands from imagination, which is gonna be huge, which is gonna be huge. Uh, another big thing I need to practice is male versus female hands because <laughs> I'm not sure if you noticed it during that speed run, but female hands are a lot different to male hands. They're a lot, the fingers are a lot more slim. Uh, the tips of the fingers are a lot more pointy as well. So that's kind of what I realized when I was doing these female hands. This one was freaking hard, man. This was insanely hard because of how small the hands are just in the image. So I had to draw the hands really small too. Um, I didn't think I did too badly here with though. The most part actually looks pretty accurate, I think. Again, I just sketched in the glasses as an estimate. But yeah, no, I'm really happy with uh, drawings today. I'm glad I did this. I was really hesitant going into this because I was like, oh no, hands. But it's not that bad. I love this one especially. This one, I think I nailed, like, pretty much. And then, let's see here. What other ones have we done? This one was cool, because it was like a punch. A foreshortening punch. Again, I think I nailed that. Apart from the middle finger. The middle finger's a bit bigger. And the angle's a bit less on it. And if you notice, all of these, they follow this line. Kind of like this to show the box in 3D space. It'd be like, you know, to show that it's leaning. It's a leaning object. And these are coming forward and then this plane's going backwards. And then again, this plane's coming forwards. So if I had to show it in 3D, it'd be something like that. And then what else? This one I did with all of you. This one was pretty tough. I can't lie, but I think I still got it though. The one thing I didn't get is the nails for sure. Like the actual features of the hand I, I don't get. But the fingers are pointy. You can tell it's mostly a female hand. And then the first one we did together. Also very happy with this one. Uh, but I could tell like... For example, this finger's skinny. Because we didn't use the cylinder method. So, I would recommend using the cylinder method if you can't get your proportions right. Because then at least each finger is the right width. Um, so that's the only thing I'd realize here. But yeah, that would be it from me. If you enjoyed me drawing some hands, uh, establishing new fetishes every day, Make sure to subscribe if you're new, comment down below with your thoughts, and smash the like button for me. Apart from that, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.